Our ancestors made sense of reality by telling each other stories of their gods. This is our attempt to bring those tales back to life. Zeus. I sit at the head of the feast. The court rejoiced as they reveled in drink and music. It was good to see my family, happy and whole. Titans and Olympians alike, now sat together in harmony. I smile and drink. I should be relieved, for the ceremony is over now. All I must do is put on a good face for my court. Perhaps in time, I will grow fond of my new wife. But that does not matter. The universe is finally at peace. I shall not break it, even for love. I feel a hand grab my own and turn to give a tight smile to my new wife. The titaness Metis squeezes my hand and offers a small smile before letting go to drink from her own cup. I watch the court celebrate, drinking cup after cup, waiting for it all to be over. But there is a pit in my stomach. It grows as the evening draws to a close. The light had gone from the skies hours ago. The fires were finally dying out when Metis led me away from the thinning crowd. Poseidon cannot help himself but announce our departure in a slurred shouting that made everyone embarrassed. Hades pulled him away, trying to silence him before it was done. They all clap and cheer as we walk away from them. I cursed his drunken stupidity. In a grassy glade on the mountain, Metis and I were alone. She looked at me, and I saw she understood. I could not hold her gaze. I looked to the distance and sighed. I heard her step away from me, and then felt the waves of power from her. When I turned, she had transformed, metamorphosized into a lioness. In my mind, I heard her voice. If we are to be one, we must learn about each other and learn to trust one another. I am to be your queen, and I can help you rule, young Zeus. I can give you good counsel. I can guide you, if you will let me. She walked towards me, staring, as if she were trying to see into my mind. To do this, I must know you and who you are, as you must know me. This will take time, but I suggest, my king, a competition of sorts. Go on, wife. I shall run to the palace, and you shall try to catch me before I do. But we may only use the forms of animals. For I find one can learn much about a person in competition. Through their strategy, how they face different challenges, and which forms they might choose to take. What happens when I catch you, wife? What then? You will have to wait to see and find out, if you catch me. When I catch you? We shall see then, my king. <laughs> I laughed as she quickly turned on her paws and leapt into the thick bushes. I jumped after her, transforming myself into a lion as I did. She was fast and agile, but I caught up to her. Our limbs allowed us to pounce from surface to surface. She dove into a thick bush 
out of my sight for a moment. I pursued, but as I jumped into the leaves, expecting to see her, she was gone. Then a small snake slithered on a branch in between the leaves. She suddenly snapped toward me, sliding down the fur of my back. I tried to catch her in my paws, but she slid from my grasp. Wrapping herself around my leg, giving it a squeeze before she released me. I transformed my paws into talons, but not fast enough for her scales melted into feathers, and she is gone once more. Disappeared into a hole in the mountainside. My heart raced, adrenaline coursing through my veins. My rage ignited as she taunted me. But there was excitement too. It felt good to use my power without war or fear hanging over my head. I transformed myself into an eagle and followed her flight path. But I had made a mistake already, for an eagle is too big to fit into the crevice that her hummingbird body squeezed through. But I looked into the gap. With the eyes of the eagle, I saw her path. I quickly flew around the mountainside as I had guessed her trajectory. As a hummingbird popped out of the rock face, I launched and grasped her tiny body in my talons. So she transformed into a goat, her hide now bursting and growing under my claws. We are dragged to the ground, but I changed myself with her. My claws becoming the hands of an ape, I grasped at her, thrashing fur, but she swiped at my hands and I recoiled. I let her go for only a moment, and as I darted my hands back to her, she slipped just out of my reach again. She transforms into an owl now, soaring high into the clouds. I am only a few meters behind her. As I launched myself from the ground with my knuckles, I donned the feathers of an eagle once more. But I did not follow her into the haze. This chase was not working in my favor. I flew through a shortcut up the mountainside and lingered in the air, looking at my palace. She had not made it back yet. Metis does not know the place as well as I. I transformed one last time and waited in the shadows. I knew if she was to come back, she would have to do so right through my path. I saw when she emerged from the haze above, she waited in the air, looking back, searching for a sign of me she would not find. She was confident and swooped low, just as I had expected. She had assumed I was still behind her. I held my breath as she rode the wind, closer and closer, until I struck. <laughs> Pouncing with the legs of a fox, I pinned the owl with my paws against the stone. She squawked and squirmed, trying to flap her trapped wings. But she was beaten. I had won. We transformed back into ourselves, a golden light bursting from both our bodies as we changed. Her wrists were still in my hands, with beads of sweat on both our brows. We stayed like that, staring at each other's eyes with heaving chests, the thrill of the chase pumping through both our veins. I let her go, and we laughed. She took my hand and drew me into the palace under the starry sky, and we became husband and wife as one flesh that night. The next months were more pleasant than expected. The court was still learning how to function, but there was peace, harmony between us Olympians and the Titanesses. Metis had indeed been an asset politically, as Mother had declared. I did not love her, but I had grown to like her more. We were no longer strangers, but closer to friends than true lovers. But the pit, the dread that had sat in my being since childhood, had not gone away. I thought, with the destruction of Kronos, my father, it would leave. But it did not. 
Then I thought it was my marriage I feared. But months have gone by, and it still has not left me. It was easily ignored with my family, though. My brothers and I took time to see what we wanted of the world. A world we had been hidden from, but now ruled. We had the chance to do as we wanted, with no fear and no need to hide. It was refreshing, but it would take time to adjust to. No matter. We have all the time in the world now. Until one night... I could not sleep. Metis was beside me, but rolled over and facing away. I closed my eyes and listened. I listened out for the sounds of nature beyond my castle, the comforting sounds of my grandmother, but I heard a beat instead. A heart steadily beating. So close to my ears, it felt like it was in my head. I opened my eyes and looked to Metis, focusing on the sound of heartbeats. I heard her slow, rhythmic beating, but there was a new rhythm, faster and lighter than hers, coming from her belly. And then, I saw my father's face. The tiny heartbeat in my head played as I watched the memory of his death behind my eyes. This is a cycle. Once, I was the hero. I was the tyrant killer. This will not end with me, boy. It is a curse of the line. Look to your own offspring, for they shall be your undoing, and in time, you will be the one called a tyrant, and you will stand where I do now. That night, I could not sleep for the thumping of that tiny thing would not let me. I did not sleep for many nights after that. I could not, while she was beside me, with that life growing in her. When I finally did rest, I was plagued with nightmares. They all started with him, Kronos my father. His face in flames, his words echoed around me, a curse passed down from father to son. Then I hear screams, the screams of the old king, of the soldiers that died on the battlefield, the screams of a woman. I know it is Metis. I do not see her, but I know. The haze around me clouds my vision, and I see my father's face as it disintegrates into dust. His screams fade in a heartbeat. I look down, and his soul is crackling in my hands. I blink, and the energy becomes a baby. In the nightmares, it was one child. Only one to begin with. A daughter. My daughter. She is so small in my hands, I fear I may break her. But she is mighty as I look into her eyes, and I feel relief. For I know she will grow into a powerful goddess. I know I love her, and would never hurt her. Nor she, I. We are safe for we are the same. But then, some of the nightmares would be different, for there would be two babes in my arms, not one, my girl and a twin boy. But when I saw his face, I saw power 
and darkness. In his eyes, I saw not myself, but Kronos reborn, and stronger than before. He would have a power beyond us both, beyond us all. In some dreams, it would be one baby in my arms, but it would change with each blink of my eyes, switching back and forth between the girl and boy, light and darkness. But when it was the boy alone, I stared at him, and the pit that had been there grew and consumed me. The longer I looked at the boy, I saw images of the future. I saw the world in flames, more gods and goddesses dying in great battles. Gaia herself, burning and screaming. The heartbeat grew louder and louder, overpowering it all, until his dark eyes were the only thing left. But it would always end with me staring at him as he plunged his hand into my chest, taking my beating heart into his hands and squeezing. I would wake then, heart pounding, sweat slicked brow, gasping for breath. I took to flying around the mountain at night, when I would wake from the nightmares. It helped to be in the skies, alone, away from the constant noise, from it. The nightmares repeated over and over, until I could take it no longer. One night, I flew to the old island, making my way deep into the cave in the earth I had once called home. I consulted with Grandmother that night, for I had to know. The words that Kronos said to me on his last day, they could not be true, surely. But, of course, they were. And there was more, for a prophecy was known now by Gaia. For the union between Metis, the Titaness, and I, Zeus of Olympus, would indeed bear two fruit. Two children, a girl as powerful as her parents, no more or less mighty than any of the gods to exist. But the boy, my son, he would surpass us all. He is destined to strip my power from me and take the universe as his own. I flew back to Olympus, torn and confused, searching for a way out, a way to save us all. I circled the mount as an eagle on the clouds until the sun was high in the sky. The next day at court, I sat on my throne and thought long and hard. The burning of the world was still playing in my mind, only to be shaken by Metis's hand on my shoulder. Husband, what ails you? It is not like you to be so secluded inward. The lack of sleep the past few weeks had not affected me physically. I am a god. We do not need to sleep like mortals do, but I feel my mind was more fragile, easily twisted by wild ideas. I smiled to Metis and took her hand in mine, the echo of two heartbeats pressing through her fingertips into mine. Godly senses can be overwhelming at times. What can I do? I am worrying over nothing, wife. Let us transform as we have done. I wish to go closer to you still. It will brighten my mood and show the court how united we are. She smiled brightly and stood from her throne. Descending the steps and walking to the center of the hall, I follow her. The chatter around the hall dims as we take our places. With a shimmer of golden light, 
and I held my breath as she transformed into the lioness from our first night. But the heartbeat was still there. I had thought, fool that I was, for a moment, that if she changed, then it might disappear, become nothing before it can be something. Better nothing and safe than something and risk the destruction of the universe itself. I changed myself into a great lion as the court roars with applause. Metis and I circled one another. The heartbeat grew louder the closer she got. I look at her and nod. We both leap into the air in unison. A flash in the hall, and she was an owl being circled by an eagle. My court oohed and aahed with approval. Titans and Olympians proud of their budding rulers. But I could not hear them over the thump, thump, thump. It was still there. This was not working. Our dance around the hall became more aggressive. I flew quicker, the instincts of the animal now mixing with my own frustration. I flew after her in earnest. Picking up speed, I was hot on Metis's tail feathers now, and lost in the hunt. She tried to fly faster, unsure if it was still a game, but she was smaller than I. Blinded in that moment, I took a swipe at her, but she transformed into a fly, narrowly missing my claws. But the heartbeat was still there. There was no way to stop it. I cannot remember what was happening in my mind at that moment. All I remember is the sudden gasps of horror from the court and hearing the drumming subside as the fly was caught in my beak and swallowed down my throat. I had eaten my wife. There was silence as I transformed back into my true form. All eyes in the room stared at me. I sat down on my throne, unable to offer a word in my defense. Poseidon broke the silence, and Hades called a dismissal. All filtered out of the room in silence, shock on each of their faces. My brothers came to my side and took me to my chambers. Metis I woke in darkness, alone and afraid. I had once imagined the hell the Olympian children had faced to be trapped inside their own father. I had pitied them. I did not think I would ever be in a similar position. But I am trapped inside my own husband. But this feels strange. It does not feel as I had imagined a stomach would. I transform myself into water trying to fill the cavernous space. But it did not seem to have a limit. I stretched my essence as far as it would go, and it was still not enough. I felt my being mix into the darkness as I transformed back into my true self I felt as if I were not whole. Like this void had absorbed a part of me into it. I did not lose hope, but what use was there? What escape could there be from the ruler of the universe itself? None could defeat him now. But I had to think of my child. 
for I will not allow them to be trapped here. I can feel, even as I sit here, a drain on my energies. But I take what power I have left, determined to keep my child safe. I would not leave them unprotected and alone, as I am. A plan formed in my mind. I will use my godly might to protect my child at all costs. I will make them a helm to keep them safe, and a spear, a weapon in the hope that they might break free. I use all my energies over the next weeks to shape and mold these weapons of power and protection. Days upon days in darkness, shaping and transforming, beating the metals with my own hands, over and over and over. But I feel myself grow weaker and weaker. The darkness around me is consuming my very soul. Finally, they are almost complete, and I am almost powerless. I put the last of my essence into the child's helm before I am drowned in the sea that is Zeus. We will never be individuals again. Strange, ironic. I wanted to be with him forever. And now, I will be. Zeus. It had been months since the accident, and the court were all still afeard of me. But none would say a word. But I was preoccupied for there was a banging inside my head. It was rhythmic and frustrating to begin with, but then it died down until there was no sound. But now it has come back in full force, and differently this time. There was no rhythm now, just constant, incessant pounding in my head. It had been going on for weeks. It was more maddening than the heartbeat that never stopped. It was bearable once, but that was long behind me now. For it was unending. Just when I might have adjusted to it, the pattern in intensity would change again. It started up small, but just grew and grew with time. It had gotten to the point where I would hit my head against a stone wall at night to try to get it to stop, even for a second. Then, one day, I could take no more. I burst into the courtroom, and a hush fell over the crowd. I felt maddened as I eyed each god and goddess. None would meet my gaze, save my brothers and Hera. Prometheus caught my eye as he tried to leave unnoticed. Prometheus, bring me an axe. I have need of you. I fear no one here has the strength to do as I ask. He looked at me with a blank face, then nodded and marched to the armory. My brothers tried to talk to me, begged me to let them help. But I could barely hear them over the noise, the banging. The endless banging. Hades and Poseidon both refused to strike me, so I dismissed them. For this was the only way to relieve my pain now. I do not know how I knew. I just knew. He marched back with the golden metal axe and knelt before my throne. And I ordered Prometheus to strike my head. And he nodded. Eyes and expression blank to me. If he did smile, 
I did not see it beyond the pain. I leant my head toward the ground, and Prometheus struck me hard. With the crack of my skull, the loud noise inside was now thundering around the hall. All could hear. Before I could sigh with relief, I felt fingertips pushing through the wound in my head, grasping at both sides, before wrenching my skull wide open. My eye-core pooled on the floor as I bellowed. The court stood aghast with open mouths. A head then burst from my own, arms pushing at me until the being fell to the floor at my feet. A spear in one hand, a cloak on her back, and a shining helm on her head. She was a fully grown goddess. It was the birth of my daughter, Athena. And I took her hand in mine and helped her to her feet. With a flash of light, the wound on my head healed instantly. I took a moment to look at her face. She has her mother's eyes. And I am struck with guilt. But there is a light. I find my mind is sharper and wiser with the loss of Metis. I feel more in myself. And in that moment, I knew what to do. Brothers, sisters, aunts and cousins. Today we celebrate a new goddess joining our ranks. My daughter with the Titaness Metis. Athena. I know you are shocked, as am I, but I understand what has happened now. You did not know, but there was a prophecy for the children of Metis and myself. Our daughter is to be mighty as we, for I accept her and bring her into our court with welcoming arms. She is no threat to us or our world. And with her mother's wisdom, I declare she shall make a fine advisor to me. What happened to my wife, Metis, was a mistake. An accident of circumstance and unreasoned thinking. It was a moment where I allowed the blood of Kronos to control my actions. I admit it. I was wrong. But, my family, let me explain. For Athena was destined to have a brother, and he would bring about the destruction of the very universe. I am sure of it. And in a moment of sheer madness, I swallowed Metis down. I know now, thanks to her wisdom, that I should have turned to you all, my family. I should have asked you what was to be done. But I cannot take back the past. I will work to make amends and prove to you all I am not my father's son. I will not banish my offspring, and I will bring about a better universe than he ever could. I am better, and will be better still, for Metis is now a part of me. We are one. I am Zeus Meshiator now. Athena took my hand and raised it to the sky and the court was silent before breaking into a cheer. It would take time, as many Titans and Olympians were wary of me, but I would not allow myself to make a mistake like this again. More to put it, that part of Metis that was inside me would never allow me to do such a thing again. I thought I would at least have a chance to earn back the trust I had lost with my family. But Grandmother was not to be so forgiving. Little did I know that the Earth was mustering her own forces against me. 
even going so far as to plot with her brother, Tartarus himself. But that was my greatest trial, and a tale for another time. Living Mythology is our attempt to bring the stories of our ancestors back to life. They explained their universe through the medium of their religions. Their gods were not distant beings of academic study. They were living, breathing entities that reflected the wants, needs, good and evil in the very heart of humanity. We only wish to encourage others to study the deep and rich cultures of our forebears. We hope you have enjoyed our labors. If so, then do consider liking and subscribing. If you wish to support improvement in our endeavor, then we do have a patron as well. Until next time, be good to all, but most especially yourself.